Um, <clears throat> shortcuts. We're going to do two shortcuts today. They are called girls, SSS and SAS are our shortcuts, okay? Um, SSS is the side, side, side postulate, okay? That means you will have three sides of this triangle, congruent to three sides of this triangle, and we know the triangles are congruent with just that information. So if you have three sides of one and three sides of another, triangles will be congruent, okay? That's what this says. So if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles must be congruent. So you don't need to know anything about the angles if you have all three sets of sides congruent, okay? In other words, if I look at this picture right now, I know that triangle ABC is congruent to what triangle? If I say ABC, then it has to be DEF, okay? If I go A to B to C, I went through one hash mark and then through two. I have to go D, E, F through one and then through two, okay? So you have to name them in the right order. And the reason is S, S, S. So I can say the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay. Um, the reason this works is because triangles are what are called rigid figures. Okay, you cannot take a triangle, push on the top of it here, and make your sides move to make a different triangle. If you have those three side lengths, this is the only triangle you can make with those three side lengths. Now, it might be flipped over, it might be turned, it, it can look different, but it's the same exact setup. There is some way you can put them directly over top of each other, and they are the same triangle. Okay, um, so they are rigid figures. Can you think of a figure that's not a rigid figure? Like you have all the same side lengths, but if you push on it, it could just turn into a new look, a new shape. A square, a square is not a rigid figure. Um, any quadrilateral, really, um, but a square would work, right? If I took, let's say this rectangle, and I pushed on the top of it, I could still have those four side lengths, and now it's a parallelogram, okay? That does not work for triangles. Triangles are not um, movable like that. They are rigid. They are stuck in their ways. They are, here's my three sides, and those are the three sides, okay? Um, so that's what this means. That's why SSS works, because there's no way to push on it and get a new triangle that has the same side lengths. Does that make sense? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, a lot of proofs with this stuff, which you'll see when you get there. Um, big things to do with proofs, okay? Make sure you mark as you go. The things you know, you should have marked on your picture, okay? Always mark what you know. So if you look at this first thing, it says LM is congruent to NP, and they actually marked that for you. And then LP is congruent to NM, and they marked that for you. And we are trying to prove the triangles are congruent, okay? Um, what is your first step? Given, okay? We take our given information, we drop it in there. Oh, there we go. Um, and we call it given. Can you tell me any of your other blanks right now? Proof. The proof, right? Goes where? Number three on the left. left. Okay, so take what they asked you to prove, triangle LMN, and put it here. Okay, now, if I'm trying to prove the triangles are congruent, as of Tuesday, we said you have to know all three sets of sides and all three sets of angles have to be congruent. But now I gave you a shortcut that says, as long as you know the three sides of this triangle are congruent to the three sides of this triangle, you're good. 
do you see a third side of these two triangles that's congruent? LN, LN right? We can say segment LN is congruent to segment LN. Why is that? Reflexive. It's reflexive. Remember I said reflexive is going to show up all <coughs> the time? Look for it, okay? And then mark it because look what happens. If I know LN is congruent to LN, now look at your triangles. I have a side that corresponds to a side, a side that corresponds to a side, and a side that corresponds to a side. So why are the triangles congruent? SSS, right? We have the three sides congruent. That's your full proof. That's not hard, right? It's so good. We love it. Um, okay, so that's what you're going to see a lot of with SSS. SSS uses a lot of the reflexive property because you're not doing anything with angles. You're only dealing with side lengths, okay? Um, on to the next one, though. This one, we're dealing with angles now. Um, so we need to talk about what is the included angle, okay? Um, the included angle is the angle that lies between the two sides that we're working with. Um, so it's going to be between, okay, between the two sides. So for instance, um, I would say angle A is included between what two sides? Angle A is the included angle between what two segments here? What two sides of my triangle? A, B. B. Right, this side here, oops, that's an and, and AC, okay? So it's between the two sides. In other words, those two sides are forming our angle, okay? So C would be included between BC and CA. Does that make sense? It's the included angle. It's the one that's right in the mix, right in the middle of what we're working with. So... What that does is that gives us the second shortcut, and that's called the side angle side postulate, which is SAS. -S. And this one says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another <laughs> triangle, then those triangles will be congruent. Okay, so we don't need to know all three sides anymore. Now we can say two sides and the angle between them. Okay, as long as it's the included angle, we can say SAS. So notice this, this side corresponds to this side, this side corresponds to this side, and our angle is in between them. Okay, between our two sides is our included angle. So I know right now that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle D, E, F, and you must name them in the right order, okay? A, B, C is not congruent to F, E, D. A, B, C is congruent to D, E, F, okay? And the reason they are congruent is by S, A, S. All right. So take a look at this example two. It says, what other information do you need to know to prove DEF congruent to FGD? So first of all, D, okay, <coughs> corresponding to F up here. Um, e corresponding to G. And... <coughs> the second F corresponding to the second D, right? So pay attention to which triangles they're saying are congruent. DEF is congruent to FGD. What do we need to know to be able to say they're congruent by SAS? How many things do you know right now? How many sets of sides or angles do we currently know? We currently know two things, right? We currently know that EF is congruent to DG, but what else do we know? We know reflexive, right? They don't have to tell us that. We know those two segments are congruent. So we also know this right now. So what they're asking is, 
If we want to say SAS, what's that third piece of information we would need to know? First of all, is it a side or an angle? An angle, right? We're looking for this. We're looking for the A in our SAS because we have the two S's. This side with this side, this side with this side. What is the included angle for both of those sets of sides? We can't call it F. EFD, okay? This one right here, EFD would have to be congruent to what? FDG, this angle right here. Okay, we don't know that. How would we know it? What would they have to tell us to know, yep, those are congruent? It. Yeah, if they told us the lines were parallel, then we do know that. But they haven't told us the lines are parallel, so we don't know that. Does that make sense? Okay, but if they had, then we know it, and then we don't have to know anything extra. We already know everything we need to know. This one's saying we don't know this yet, so what do we need to know? We need to know that this is congruent because we know this is congruent. Therefore, if that is congruent, then we can say SAS because it's the included angle. It's the angle that falls between the two sides they gave us. Okay. Okay. Um, example three here. So this one says, um, would you use SSS or SAS? And then write the congruent statement. Okay. And this is the part that people always forget or mess up on. Um, if we don't know either one, if it's not SSS or SAS, then you just say NEI means not enough info, okay? Um, so take a look at this letter A. Do we know that those two triangles are congruent? Yes. By what? SSS. SSS. Okay, so here's what you have to do. Um, you have a side that corresponds to a side a side that corresponds to a side, and a side that corresponds to a side. You don't have to write that in for me ever. I just want you to see it for those of you that maybe don't see it right away, okay? Here's what you do have to write for me. You need to say triangle. So if I say ABC is congruent, so I started A to B to C. So I went through the double hash mark and then the single. So if I'm gonna go through the double and then the single, what triangle is that? X, Y, Z. From X through the double through the single would be triangle X, Y, Z. I promise they don't always go in alphabetical order. These ones are a little simpler. So we would say those two triangles are congruent and then the congruent statement also has to tell us why. So they are congruent by what postulate or theorem? SSS, okay? All right, look at letter B. Are those two triangles congruent? If so, why? If not, we say not enough info. Who thinks yes, those are congruent? Who thinks nope, those are not congruent? So most of you didn't vote, but the ones that did voted in the right direction. Good job. Um, so you have this side corresponds to this side. Right, so that's a side with a side. You have, well, let's just, let's not do angle yet. Let's do the other side. Another side that corresponds to a side. And then notice it is the included angle, right? This is the angle formed by those two sides and the included angle. So we do have SAS, which means we can say triangle. So let's say I say triangle ACB. What triangle is ACB congruent to? QPR, right? I went single hash mark to double hash mark, so I need to go single to double. So QPR and then by SAS. OK, 
Okay, look at letter C. Are these two triangles congruent? Who thinks yes? I see head nods. Who thinks no? Okay, why? What, by what postulate or theorem? SSS. Okay, what if I take this away? Is there an SAS? Yeah. Why? What kind of angles are those? Vertical, Vertical angles. Okay. So here's the thing. Let's say we didn't give you this. And you said, are those two congruent? We know vertical angles are congruent. They don't have to tell us that, right? So even though they didn't mark them congruent for us, they are. So we can say triangle. So if I say um, ACB, what triangle is ACB congruent to? ECD by SAS or if we use the other one, right? If we leave those there, you could have said SSS, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Now this last one, you have to be a little careful with. Um, take a look at what we have here. You have a side that corresponds to a side, a side that corresponds to a side, and you do have an angle congruent to an angle, what's the issue? Is it the same angle? It's not the included angle, right? It's included here. That's our sides that are, we're using, but this would be the included one. And that's not the one they have marked. So even though there's a side and angle and a side with a side and angle and a side, this is not enough info. Okay, this is not SAS. This is what we call the donkey theorem, right? Um, and donkey theorem does not work. You will never swear at your teacher, in other words. If you're ever tempted to write the word ass on your paper, you're wrong, okay? Um, it's a good indicator that it doesn't work because it does not exist. You will never write this or flip it backwards, you will never write that, okay? They don't exist. Now, there's one situation where they exist, but we use different letters because it's a different type of triangle. And I'll get to that eventually, we're not there yet. Um, but if you ever see ASS where it's not the included, think this cannot be, okay? It doesn't work. Questions on that? Okay, um, I'm gonna do one of these with you, and then I want you to try the other one on your own, okay? Um, actually, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, yeah, we'll do one. Um, we'll do one together, and then I want you to try one on your own, and then you can get started on the homework. Um, there is a PDF for the homework again, please use it, because it gives you how many steps you need for the proofs. It's, it's helpful. Um, all right, so this first one, um, and I think this is a homework, they might actually both be homework problems from, for tonight. So you'll just get to like try it again on your own, okay? Um, IE congruent to GH, so notice they mark that. Um, and then EF congruent to FH, so they mark that. And then this last thing says F is the midpoint, okay? Are you ready for another big pointer that you're gonna use throughout this whole chapter? When you see a word in the given, like midpoint or bisect or perpendicular, when you see a word in the given, you typically use the definition of whatever word is given in your proof, okay? Remember that, if you see a word in the given, definition of that word is going to show up, okay? Um, all right, so let's think about this. What do we know first? The given, okay? So your first step is always gonna be your given. That goes here. Um, 
Now, it might be tempting right now to say, oh, we know vertical angles, but what theorem shows up if we use those vertical angles? Not SAS. ASS, right? Donkey, which doesn't exist. So while those are congruent angles, they're not helpful to us right now. What is helpful is the fact that in the given, they tell us F is the midpoint of GI. What does that help us with? If it's a midpoint, what do we know? What does a midpoint do? It what? Not a vertical angle, why? Yeah, it makes the segments equal, right? If this is a midpoint, then these two segments are congruent. So that's what we're gonna say. IF is congruent to FG. Why do I know that? Definition of a midpoint, right? A midpoint makes the segments equal. So now I can say what they asked me to prove. The two triangles are congruent by what? SSS, side, side, side. Now, if you wanted to make this a longer proof, you could make it a four-step proof and do SAS using vertical angles, okay? I don't recommend it because you're just making more work for yourself, but you could use SAS as long as you say FI is congruent to FG then it does have the included. Okay, look at 29. Another homework problem. Maybe not for tonight. It might be for the next one. I don't remember. It might be tonight. Um, AE and BD bisect each other. What's step one? Given. The given. Okay, so all of this information is going to go right here. <coughs> what does that given tell us? Why are they telling us that two segments bisect each other? Nico. It means that DCA and DCE are both 90 degree angles. It doesn't mean they're perpendicular, because it doesn't say it's a perpendicular bisector. It says they bisect. What does it mean to bisect? Well, it's, the it's the midpoint. It's equal parts, right? So you can say right now that BC is congruent to CD, and this is two things on one step because they're the same reason. So BC is congruent to CD, and AC is congruent to CE. Okay, so in your homework, I sometimes put like two lines, but with only one reason. That's why. Those are my two things, but they have the same reason. What's the reason? Remember, there's a word in our given. Definition of a bisector. Okay, definition of bisect or bisector is fine. Okay, so look at what we know. We're trying to prove these two triangles are congruent. Is there anything else you know about these two triangles? Why? Vertical angles. Um, vertical angles show up a lot in proofs. Okay, just like reflexive shows up a lot, vertical angles show up a lot. So we're going to say angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE. Why can't I say angle C is congruent to angle C? There's two separate angle Cs. There's really four angle Cs there, right? Um, so tell me which ones are congruent. And the reason for that is they are vertical angles. Okay, so now look at your two triangles. Our last thing is what they asked us to prove. The triangles are congruent. Why? Side with side, included angle with included angle, side with side, S-A-S. -S. Okay, here's another pointer for you. In proofs, Whenever the step is two triangles congruent, a triangle congruent to a triangle, it will always be SSS, SAS, you'll learn ASA, AAS, and HL, okay? Whenever they're proving triangles congruent, it will be one of those every single time, okay? <laughs>